Solid Rock? Are you happy to be in the house of the Lord this morning? Yes, I love that. Um, I'll invite you to stand to your feet. You may not need all the words to this, but this is 187 in our hymn book. Oh, that's a bad number. <laughs> I know, I know. When she asks you to get your hymn book out, that means she wants you to sing along with her this morning, church. Generally, generally. People like to think this is a children's song, but it's kind of where we all start, and then we kind of forget about it when we grow up, so we're going to bring you back to Sunday school this morning. That's right. The song is Jesus Loves Me. <clears throat> Jesus loves me, this I know. For the Bible tells me so, little ones to him belong. They are weak, but he is strong. Yes, Jesus loves me. Yes, Jesus loves me. Yes, Jesus loves me, the Bible tells me so. Jesus loves me, he who died, heaven's gate to open wide, he will wash away my sin let his little child come in yes jesus loves me yes jesus loves me yes jesus loves me, yes, jesus loves me. the Last verse. Jesus loves me, he will stay close beside me all the way. Thou hast bled and died for me. I will henceforth live for thee. Yes, Jesus loves me. Yes, Jesus loves me. Yes, Jesus loves me. The Bible tells me so. Amen. I think they remembered it pretty well, so. church. So if you still have a hymn book, I want you to close it and set it down. You know what's coming next, church. I want you to go take those hands and maybe put them in somebody else's hands and shake them up and down gently, friendly-like, not aggressive. That's not okay. We're going to sing a song you may be familiar with. It's called More Than Enough. Go tell someone you're happy to see them. All of you is more than enough for all of me for every thirst and every need you satisfy me with your love and all i have in you is more than enough You are my supply, my breath of life, still more awesome than I know. You are my reward, worth living for, still more awesome than I know. And All of you is more than enough for. All of me for every thirst and every need you satisfy me with your love and all I have in you is more than enough. 
You're my sacrifice of greatest price. Still more awesome than I know. You're my coming king. You're everything, Lord. Still more awesome than I know. And all of you is more than enough for all of me for every thirst and every need you satisfy me with your love and all I have in you is more than enough more than all I want more than you are more than enough for me more than all i know more than all i can see lord you are more than enough for me all of you is more than enough for all of me for every thirst and every need, you satisfy me with your love, and all I have in you is more than enough. It's more than enough. may be seated, church. Check. I think y'all can still hear me. <laughs> She's like, oh, yeah. We decided last minute to throw together some songs and uh, just kind of see where the spirit leads and what, would, what did the church need this morning? What did maybe one person need to hear this morning? Uh, so... You've heard the song before on the radio. You probably have heard every word. We've sang it many times, but we're going to share it again this morning because the song popped out to us, and it's, that just means somebody here's heart is aching for the, the meaning of the lyrics here. I keep fighting voices in my mind that say I'm not enough. Every single lie that tells me I will never measure up. Am I more than just the sum of every high and every low? Remind me once again just who I am because I need to know. You say I am loved when I can't feel a thing. You say I am strong when I think I am weak. You say I am held when I am falling short. And when I don't belong, oh, you say I'm yours, and I believe. I believe. Oh, I believe. I believe what you say of me. Oh, I believe. The only thing that matters now is everything you think of me. It's in you I find my worth, in you I find my identity. You say I am loved when I can't feel a thing. You say I am strong when I think I am weak. And you say I am held when I am falling short. And when I don't belong, oh, you say I am yours, and I believe, I believe, oh, I believe, I believe what you say of me, oh, I believe, taking all. 
and I think I am weak. You say I am held when I am falling short. And when I don't belong, oh, you say I am yours. You say I am loved when I can't feel a thing. You say I am strong when I think I am weak. And you say I am held when I am falling short. And when I don't belong, oh, you say I am yours. And I believe, oh, I believe what you say of me. Oh, I believe, yes, I believe, oh, I believe what you say of me. Oh, I believe. Thank you, Chair. Thank you very much. Yeah. Road design. Oh, we didn't know her. Sure. <laughs> only because Leela asked. Oh, only <laughs> if any, if not like else Leela. Asked, we say no. No, I'm just kidding. All right. Hold on. That lady can sing, y'all. She knows every note. I'll sit here and think if I messed up on a note, I look at Leela. I was like, oh, she would know what it was. She would know. Okay. All right. Sure, we'll sing right. it. We'll sing it. All There's right. a difference. Yes. There's a difference, church. You either sing it or you sing it. That's I can't right. read that. <laughs> I know you can't. I'm sorry. We'll try it. All right, I, let's sing this song. There is a way that leads to life. The few that find it never die. Past mountain peaks, graced white with snow. The way grows brighter as it goes. There is a road inside of you. Inside of me there is one too. No stumbling pilgrim in the dark. The road to science in your heart. The road to science in your heart. The river runs beside the road. Its waters living as they flow. In liquid voice, the water calls. On thirsty knees, the pilgrim falls. There is a road inside of you. Inside of me, there is one too. No stumbling pilgrim in the dark. The road to Zion's in your heart. The road to Zion's in your heart. Sometimes a shadow, dark and cold, lays like a mist across the road. But be encouraged by the sight. Where there's a shadow, there's a light. There is a road inside of you. Inside of me there is one too. No stumbling pilgrim in the dark. The road to Zion's in your heart. The road to Zion's in your heart. Sometimes it's good to look back down. We've come so far, we've gained such ground. But joy is not in where we've been. Joy is who's waiting at the end. There is a road inside of you. Inside of me there is one too. No stumbling pilgrim in the dark. The road to Zion's in your heart. The road to Zion's in your heart. Thank you. Thank you.
Thank you, church. I appreciate your confidence in us to be able to, to give, give um, suggestions like that, so thank you. I'd like to welcome you all again to our Sunday service. It's March 5th, 2023. And if it's all right with you, I'd like to go ahead and give our scripture reading. If you have a Bible, find Psalms chapter 1. I miss Josh. He's not here this morning, but he's at home with some kind of bug. He said, please send love out for me. So how, let's do that together. You know, pray that the Lord would heal him. Psalm chapter 1, it says, Blessed is the man that walketh not in the counsel of the ungodly, nor standeth in the way of sinners, nor sitteth in the seat of the scornful. But his delight is in the law of the Lord, and in his law doth he meditate day and night. And he shall be like a tree planted by the rivers of water that bringeth forth his fruit in his season. His leaf also shall not wither, and whatsoever he doeth shall prosper. The ungodly are not so, but are like the chaff which the wind driveth away. Therefore the ungodly shall not stand in the judgment, nor sinners in the congregation of the righteous. For the Lord knoweth the way of the righteous, but the way of the ungodly shall perish. The word of the Lord. Amen. You may be seated. At this time, if I could have some volunteers to help with our morning tithes and offerings, please. And gentlemen, when you... One, two. Let me encourage you in this this morning. Even Hagar was sustained when her and her boy Ishmael was out in the desert and was running out of water. Even Hagar was sustained by the Lord. Right. And she was the bondwoman. Elijah's went to a, Elijah went to a widow and her curse of oil never failed. This is my point this morning, that the Lord renews. Amen. Mm -hmm. When the road gets long and the desert is hot, our Lord renews. Amen. So covet that this morning. Let's do it as an assembly, okay? Mm. We seek revival. We need renewal, every one of us, every day. Yeah. This is a tough pilgrimage, right? Mm -hmm. But Lord, help us. You can't think any other way, right? You can't, you can't even begin to want to be out there in this dark world. Yeah. Oh, my God. And that's another part of this weariness, the battle. It's endless. Until we leave this earthly tabernacle, th this battle is on. That's right. And it is endless. But our God is Lord. Amen. Jesus is Lord of Lord and King of Kings who stands strong. He revives, he regenerates, he renews right, right here at Solid Rock Assembly. Right within the confines of your spirit and soul. Amen. Amen. Lord Jesus, we ask for a renewal this morning. And all those, Lord Jesus, who are not quite trusting you like we should, we ask for a renewal of our faith. You give us this faith. Now set it alight, Lord Jesus Christ, by your Holy Spirit, as only you can do. We make this prayer in your holy name, Jesus Christ, that is above all names upon this planet and the world without end. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Please bring your tithes and offerings to the front. God bless you. Oh, God bless you. Let all those that seek thee rejoice and be glad. Say continually, the Lord be magnified. Be magnified, be magnified. Say continually.
continually the more be magnified. Be magnified. Be magnified. Say continually the Lord be magnified. Father God, Please bless this church, Lord, and thank you so much for this wonderful church that we have, Lord, to come worship to you, God. And thank you for being here and dying on the cross for our sins, Lord, and we all know that you're in control forever, Lord, that you're the savior of this world, Lord. Please come soon to bring your bride home, Lord, and thank you so much for everything you do, Lord. We love you, God. We praise you. In Jesus' holy name we pray. Amen. this time the youth are dismissed and I do believe the five and under will be following Darla Go ahead. it is under the weather mm -hmm. that's right that's right and ain't no problem at all no not at all I'm so grateful to be in a church where nobody bats an eye when there's a child crying or laughing in the service. Because when we're all gone, who's supposed to be in the church after us? And they are not the church of tomorrow, they are the church of today, amen. Listen to his word. Listen to his voice. Be in his presence away from all the noise. Come and worship. Come and bow down. Lift your hands. Come worship him now. Rest in his presence, rest and be renewed. Sit at his table, he's waiting here for you. Come and worship, come and bow down. Blessings, thank him for his love, thank him for mercy and all the good he's done. Come and worship, come and bow down. Lift your hand. 
you stand with me for a moment, church? And wherever you are, wherever you're sitting or standing today, I don't want you to worry about whatever's going on around you. Who else may or may not be here? That's a, that's a problem for another moment. Because we're here to worship the Lord. Amen. You know who is here? The Lord. The Holy Spirit is here. And this song is a really easy one. I sing it with bawling tears out of my eyes every time I hear my child sing or just do anything. It's just who I am. But it means something to me. The song is God is so good. God is so good, God is so good, God is so good, He's so good to me, He cares for me, He cares for me. him so I love him so I love him so I love him so he's so good to me I praise his name I praise him prayer. He answers prayer. Yes, he does, church. He answers prayer. He answers prayer. And he's so good to me. Sing hallelujah. That again, let's sing hallelujah. 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 He's so good to me. God is so good. God is so good, God is so good, God is so good, he's so good to me. Amen. As the Spirit leads, if you want to stay standing, you can. If you want to sit, that's all right, too. But you know this song. Sing it with me. Open the eyes of my heart, Lord. Open the eyes of my heart. I want to see. One more time. Open the eyes of my heart, Lord. Open the eyes of my heart. I want to see you. I want to see you. To 
Thank you for singing with the church. You may be seated. We are going to be looking, hopefully, in Acts chapter 10 in just a few moments. Recently in the news, we've been hearing about a spiritual awakening that began in Asbury University in Kentucky. And from there, it spread to a number of colleges, high schools, and churches all over the country. But immediately, as soon as it started, different so-called preachers started taking pot shots at them. I have never heard such hateful things said by these preachers against them with absolutely no evidence whatsoever. One of them I warned because he said that it was all the work of the devil and I told him you better be really careful attributing the work of the Holy Ghost to that of Satan because you just might have stepped over the line. Always be careful what you say in the way of that. They were called a bunch of um, emotional charismatics when they are Wesleyans, by the way. They're not charismatics. They were called a bunch of uh, crazy Methodists, and again, they are Wesleyans, and they're not Methodists. And 
because these preachers didn't have it start in their church is the biggest reason why they trashed it. And I told them, I said, it is likely you will never have a revival in your church with that kind of attitude. They did a lot of name calling. The people didn't look right, didn't sound right, and didn't. And they made fun of the music, and they made fun of this, and they made fun of that. And 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 that's that's fine. God will deal with that. Got a little bit of a ringing in the system here. I'm not real sure where, which. I might be picking up a mic on the side. But nonetheless, it's kind of like a man came up to Dr. Lakin one time and said, only the Baptist will constitute the bride. <laughs> Dr. Lakin looked at him and he said, well, if it's your little goat pen, she'll be a mighty slender maiden. Yeah. A man once died and went up to heaven. And as every good joke goes, St. Peter met him at the Golden Gate. And he said, well, let me take you on a tour. So he went to this one kind of docile group of people that were assembled and praised in the Lord, and he said, now they are the Methodist. And then there was an extremely quiet group a little further in heaven, and he said, they are the, the Presbyterians. And then they went by this one group, they were hooping, hollering, having a big time, and he said, they're the Pentecostals. He said, but now we got to go all the way to the other side of heaven for me to show you this, and you got to be quiet. And when they got there, there were people there praising the Lord. He said, who are they? He said, they are the Baptists, but be quiet. They think they're the only ones up here. <laughs> now, I can say that and be qualified because I am licensed a Baptist, and I am ordained a Baptist. But as a matter of fact, I was ordained in a Baptist mission church up in Rockbridge County that was dedicated to prisoners that just got out of jail and prison. Matter of fact, I was the only one in there that didn't have a criminal record, and that's simply because I hadn't been caught. <laughs> and it felt funny. I was still a deputy sheriff when I was in there, and believe it or not, the local sheriff on Sunday morning would get a set of keys, open the jail doors and fill his patrol car up with inmates and bring them to that church. I've never seen nothing like that in my life. The sheriff really, really loved the Lord. It was absolutely amazing. And in that church was every color of the rainbow, every person from every walk of life. And I will always treasure those days. At my ordination service, in that church, it was really, it looked like something off Saturday Night Live. I had a independent Baptist, a Southern Baptist, a Church of God, and a Methodist. And the Methodist came dressed like Father Guido Sarducci. Nobody dared ask him why he looked like that, and I didn't either, but he was, well, anyway. We had a good time, and I will never forget it. They, the church didn't have a lot of money, and so they just gave me a regular Bible didn't have anything fancy about it or anything like that and I finally wore it out after a number of years but I will never forget that and it was a church that welcomed anyone and anybody that wanted to be there no matter what and so we see the lesson being taught here in Acts chapter 10 because in the early church you got to remember it first started with Jews and heaven forbid you let a Greek or a Gentile or anybody else in your congregation because that was a no-no. You didn't eat with them. You didn't go in their house. And, and it was actually a form of, of racism, if you will. And the gospel was for everybody, but God had to show the biggest mouth of all the apostles what the truth was. And, of course, you sh all you had to do was show him and there would be no trouble with the rest of them learning that object lesson. There was a certain man in Caesarea called Cornelius, a centurion of the band called the Italian Band. I thought that was a rock group when I was a teenager and reading that. But actually it was a group, uh, he was a Roman soldier, a Roman centurion. A centurion is over 100 soldiers. 
And his particular platoon, if you will, was the Italian band. And it said he was a devout man and one that feared God with all his house, which gave much alms to the people and prayed to God always. He knew about God, but he didn't know about salvation or any of the other things, but he was pursuing God. And, and, you know, that sounds a whole lot like the young people that were crowded into the uh, Asbury University. A lot of them didn't know anything much about anything because they were coming from places other than the university, and they just came seeking God. And they were read scriptures about uh, uh, repentance and about salvation and about believing on, in, in the Lord and all of that, and a lot of people left saved. And if you are truly seeking God, he will show a, find a way to reveal himself to you. And that's going to happen to Cornelius here in just a few moments. He saw in a vision evidently about the ninth hour of the day an angel of God coming into him and saying unto him, Cornelius, and when he looked on him, he was afraid, and he did know the right thing to say. He said, what is it, Lord? And he said unto him, your prayers and your alms, uh, or your giving to the poor, have come up as a memorial before God. Now send men to Joppa and call for one Simon, whose surname is Peter. He lodges with Simon the Tanner, whose house is by the seaside. And he shall tell you what you ought to do. Now here was an angel that came and he's going to give him directions of what to do in order to find the truth about the God that he loves and about the God that he is seeking for. And so when the angel which spoke unto Cornelius was departed, he called two of his household servants and a devout soldier of them that waited on him continually. And when he had declared all these things unto them, he sent them to Joppa. And on the morning, or the morrow, as they went on their journey and drew near to the city, Peter now, at the same time, he doesn't know that what's going on. He has not been told by God yet. He goes up on the housetop to pray at about 12 noon. Now, the houses back then were flat roofs. I will be the first to admit, I hate a flat roof. That has cost us more money at this church and at the school than anything, but they put dirt on theirs and grew a garden on top of it. So if we can't afford to fix this one right here, I'm just going to get a truckload of dirt and put it up there, and we're going to plant it. But he went up on top of the house to pray, and he became very hungry and would have eaten, but while they were making ready, he fell into a trance. Now God's going to show him something that is very, very profound. Because one time I resigned as pastor of a church that didn't want anybody in there that had any kind of a background or a problem or a record or that looked like them. And I immediately resigned when I tried to start a new program in that church and they didn't want nothing to do with it. And, um, and so I told them, I, I told them I'd put the cobwebs back in the classrooms where I found it if I still could. Well, after I left that church, it closed down, and I went back about a year later to check it out to see what was going on, and it, and it was a black Pentecostal hole in this church. <laughs> Don't tell me God ain't got a sense of humor. He got the last laugh on that one. All right, nonetheless. I, I, I had to tell that. And, and so while he was up there, Peter, and he fell into a trance, he saw heaven opened. And a certain vessel descending unto him as if it had been a great sheet that was knit at the four corners and let down to the earth. Now he watched that in a vision, that thing floating down, that big sheet floating down to the earth, and on that sheet, it said, were all manner of four-footed beasts of the earth and wild beasts and creeping things and fowls of the air, stuff that kind of a Jew would shy away from. They didn't want no part of those kind of animals. They were looked at as nasty. 
And the voice came to him that said, Rise, Peter, kill and eat. Mm. But Peter said, Not so, Lord, for I have never eaten anything that is common or unclean. Peter had always abided by the Jewish dietary laws. God's going to show him two separate lessons there. Jerry Falwell once preached this sermon, and he said, Upon that sheet was no doubt a Smithfield ham. I'd like to think that he's telling the truth. Because, quite frankly, I've eaten enough of that over the years to go to hell over. So I'm really hoping that the Smithfield ham was included on that sheet. All right. <laughs> so he said, I've never eaten anything that is common or unclean. And the voice spoke unto him the second time and said, What God hath cleansed that call not thou common? If God cleansed them, if God saved them, don't call it common. Don't look down on somebody because they don't look like you, sound like you, or smell like you. If God has cleansed them, they are your brothers and they are your sisters. As a matter of fact, in heaven, there ain't no Baptist. There ain't no Methodist. There ain't no Pentecostals, Lutherans, or anything else. In heaven, there's nothing but a bunch of old-fashioned sinners saved by the grace of God and washed by the blood of Jesus. So you better get used to them down here because you're going to look at them forever up there. This was done three times, and the vessel was received up again into heaven. Now, while Peter thought on these things, what this vision he had seen should mean, behold, as soon as that happened, the men which were sent from Cornelius had made inquiry for Simon's house, and they stood outside the gate. Let me tell you, the answer comes quickly when you are seeking God. He doesn't hide from you. He will reveal himself to you if you are truly seeking him. And it said, they called and asked for the Simon, which was surnamed Peter, was lodged there. And while Peter thought on the vision, the Spirit said unto him, Behold, three men seek you. Arise, therefore, and get down and go with them, doubting nothing, for I have sent them. God knows where you are all the time. There is nowhere you can go where God can't see you, God can't find you, or God can't reach you all the time. And he's able to send you help in whatever form you need, and definitely if you are seeking God. So Peter went down to the men which were sent unto him from Cornelius, and he said, Behold, I'm he who you seek. What is the cause wherefore you are come? They, she still doesn't know yet. God said, you just go down there and you, you go with them and, he, and, and don't question me. So he did. And they said, Cornelius the centurion, a just man, and one that fears God and of good report among the nation of the Jews, was warned from God by a holy angel to send for you into his house and to hear the words of you. How awesome that would be for somebody to come to your door and said, would you please come to my house and share the gospel with everybody there? You can't get no easier than that, man. That's great. And, and, and who wouldn't jump at the chance to do something like that? But he's going to be called on to go to a house where the people aren't Jews and stay with people that aren't Jews and go in their door. And so God is good. Sometimes God's got to make you uncomfortable to get you right with him. And so he's going to ask him to do something that he was not raised to do, but it is the right thing to do. Prejudice is never right. And taking, particularly taking pot shots at other denominations is absolutely ridiculous. That is the biggest reason we have no 
widespread nationwide revival in this country because yes. we're so worried about whether we're going to get to run it or not yes. or whether it's going to be our flavor or our version or our this or our that. You know, Paul said in the book of Corinthians, he begged them not to start a denominations. I know that's real unpopular what I'm saying, but denominations was invented by man. And, and we all come up with our flavor of something, and we branch off into this group, and we branch off into that group. A friend of mine was driving up on the west coast of California, and he thought he saw what he saw, and he turned around and went back and looked, and there it was on the side of the ocean, the church of the assumed Virgin Mary. That's true. That's not a lie. That's actually true. Don and I and the family were down in the mountains of North Carolina, and we drove by Bible Baptist Church. And on the sign, it said, this week's sermon, everybody ought to have a gun and know how to use it. <laughs> I asked Donna, can we stay for the weekend? I'd like to hear that, you know. Preach it, brother. But anyway, still, that shows how widely diverse that the churches are. Man, if you'd have preached that in one of them other churches, man, they'd have run you out of there. They, a lot of them think that having a gun is ungodly. Well, anyway, but that ain't going to keep them out of heaven. Might get them there a little bit quicker, but that's about it. All right, now, so Peter called these men in, and he lodged them. He let them stay in the house. And on the morrow, Peter went away with them, and certain brethren from Joppa accompanied him. So he took a group with him. And the morrow after they had entered into Caesarea, and Cornelius waited for them and had called together his kinsmen and near friends. He got the house packed. He said, there's somebody coming that's going to tell us about salvation, and I want everybody here. Man, that's the way to get the gospel out. That's a revival. That's, that's a real revival. That's a real spiritual awakening when you truly have a hunger for God. Yeah. And that is why I would never ever put down anybody that has a hunger for God. People that are searching for him. Of course they're not learned. Of course they're not corrected their uh, uh, what do you call it? Then give me some soteriology and in their um, give me some more ologies here. Well, they're, well, they're, you know, they're, they're not educated. They, 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 they don't know. They don't know about the, what the Bible says about anything. They don't know about the end times and all of that stuff, they're just looking for God. They'll get all of that later. But when and, and the problem that happened years ago in 1970, and I pray we don't make the same mistake now, and it's a movie out about that. It's about uh, Pastor Greg Laurie. I don't, really don't know much about him, but it was the Jesus Revolution. I'm going to go see it for myself this week. And it, was, and, and it took place during the hippie movement of 1970. And everybody poured into California. And it was the, they were looking for Jesus. They were seeking for Jesus. And none, hardly, hardly none of the local churches would have anything to do with nasty hippies that didn't have shoes on, didn't have a tie, wore those ridiculous tie-dye clothes, which are actually quite comfortable, to be honest with you. And, and, and they didn't look right. They had long hair. Oh, I'll never forget. I was in a singing group in the late 70s, and we were all out of Thomas Road, and it was four of us, and we were booking different churches to do around Lynchburg. And I called this one particular church, and the pastor said, well, that's fine, but I need y'all to come down here and let me look at y'all first before I let you sing in my church. I said, what do you want to look at us for? Well, I don't let no long hairs in my church. Of course, he liked to beat his wife at home on a regular basis until he got caught. But don't get me started on that idiot either. Lord have mercy. I'm going to be down a lot of rabbit holes this morning. But the problem in 1970 during the Jesus Revolution, and listen carefully to this, a lot of churches would not let them in and refused to disciple them, and the cults got them. The, and that's why there are so many members of cults about my age and a little bit older and tons of them popped up because they were more than glad to grab the hippies during that time and disciple them and that is what caused such a problem with Christianity in America 
and I pray to God that they don't make that same mistake twice and that they disciple these young people that's going to these colleges and high schools and everywhere looking for the Lord. Disciple them. Now, okay, as Peter was coming in to the house, Cornelius met him. Now, you got to understand, this Roman soldier. He don't know nothing about the Lord except he, he knew who God was, but he didn't know anything about Jesus or whatever. Cornelius met him and fell down at his feet and worshipped him, but Peter took him up and said, Stand up. I myself also am a man. Don't know. Not going to have that. And, he, and as he talked with him, he went in and found many that had come together. And he said unto them, You know how it is. You know how that it is unlawful, an un unlawful thing for a man that is a Jew to keep company or come unto one of another nation. But listen to what he said. This Peter was teachable. And you've got to be teachable if you're going to be the kind of Christian that God wants you to be. Don't have a closed mind when it comes to the Word of God. Because if you read your Bible, you will find out that it will unfit you for a whole lot of preaching that you have heard. Uh, unfortunately, it will. And so read the Bible. Be like the Bereans. When you hear a preacher preach about something, look it up and see if it's so. And he said this, God showed me that I should not call any man common or unclean. So by what God did when he let that sheet came down from heaven, he, chew, he, he changed the dietary laws and he changed the racist attitude that so many people had at that time and they thought they could apply it to Christianity. Now, therefore came I unto you without gainsaying as soon as I was sent for. And then he said, let me get the page here. I ask, therefore, what intent you have sent for me? Why did you send for me? And Cornelius told him the story. He said, four days ago I was fasting until, the, until this hour, and at the ninth hour I prayed in my house, and my man stood before me in bright clothing and said, Cornelius, your prayer is heard, your alms are had in remembrance in the sight of God. Now, therefore, send to Joppa and call Simon, whose surname is Peter. He's lodged in the house of Simon the Tanner by the sea, whom, and when he cometh, he shall speak unto thee. And he said, So immediately I sent for you, and you have well done that you have come. Now, therefore, we're all here, pre present before God, to hear all things that are commanded you of God. Wow. These people really had a hunger for God. They had no ideas ahead of time of what God was supposed to be, what box you could put him in, anything like that. They really didn't know anything much, and they wanted to hear the truth. Then Peter opened his mouth, and he started it this way, and it's the truth. Of a truth I perceive that God is no respecter of persons. Do not ever assume that you know more than God. Don't ever assume that these people are no good and those people are no good and don't get an attitude about them uh, simply because of the way they look or where they've been or what they did and think that they're not worthy of hearing the gospel of uh, a prison evangelist of mine would go to death row every once in a while. And he said, while you might deserve to be here, you also deserve to hear about Jesus. Best way in the world to put that. And, you, and everybody deserves to hear the gospel. And so he said, God is no respecter of persons, but in every nation he that feareth him and worketh righteousness is accepted with him. The word which God sent unto the children of Israel, preaching peace by Jesus Christ, he is Lord of all. That word, I say, you know, which was published throughout Judea and began from Galilee after the baptism which John preached, how God anointed Jesus of Nazareth with the Holy Ghost and with power, who went about doing good and healing all that were oppressed of the devil, for God was with him. And then he made this statement. He said, now we are witnesses 
of all things which he did, both in the land of the Jews and in Jerusalem, whom they slew and hanged on a tree. But him God raised up the third day and showed him openly, not to all the people, but unto witnesses chosen before of God, even to us who did eat and drink with him after he rose from the dead. And he commanded us to preach unto the people and to testify that it is he which was ordained of God to be the judge of the living and the dead. To him give all the prophets witness that through his name, here we go, here's the gospel, folks, real simple. You don't have to send them to me. You can tell them. Through his name, whosoever believeth in him shall receive remission of sins. Boy, how simple is that? All of the hoops that preachers will tell you you got to jump through to get saved, it really isn't true. If, they, if a child cannot understand, then that ain't the gospel. Right. Romans chapter 10 spells it out so plain that if you will confess with your mouth that Jesus is Lord and shall believe in your heart, heart that God raised him from the dead, you shall be saved. Right. And it says in verse number 13, for whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord, shall be saved. That's you, that's me, that's everybody out in the world. There ain't no such thing as that you're born for heaven or born for hell. You call on the Lord and you're going to heaven. Right. You believe in him, you trust in him for your salvation. Right. All right, now, while Peter yet spoke the words, the Holy Ghost fell on all them which heard the word. And when they of the circumcision which believed were astonished, they thought that because they were of the circumcision that they only had right to the gospel. They're a dying in the wool Jew, and we have a market on that. And when they find that these people that didn't even know anything about that were getting saved and accepting the Lord and, get, and, the, and receiving the Holy Spirit, it blowed them away. It said they were astonished. And as many as came with Peter because that on the Gentiles was also poured out the gift of the Holy Ghost and they heard them speak with languages and magnify God and then answered Peter can any man forbid water that these should not be baptized which have received the Holy Ghost as well and he commanded them to be baptized in the name of the Lord then prayed they him to stay certain days Spiritual awakening happened because a group of people were hungry for the Lord. When we get to that point to where we want the Lord above everything else that we are and that we do and that we are involved in, when he becomes preeminent, when he becomes number one, that's when the revival will break out in this area. It's not a, a, a making sure you're perfect before God. If you do that, that'll never happen. It's having a desire. It's having a hunger for the things of God. And when we do that, the revival is on. It happened here. It's happened throughout history. And so it's a matter of preparing ourselves to receive what God already has waiting for each and every one of us. But what we've got to do is come to the conclusion that we don't have a market on God. The, the reason that I was part of the Baptist church was through my education and all, I felt like that the Baptist church had more uh, a grasp on a lot of the stuff in the scriptures than some of the other denominations and then I wound up pastoring some of the other denominations and found they had a lot of good stuff to add to it too. Yeah. A lot of stuff to add to it. We're all wrong in a few areas. We all are. We all miss the boat. But, but here's, what I, here's what I'm going to tell you for the denominations. Here's your denomination right here. You believe this from, I even believe that the maps are inspired for crying out loud. And uh, and like this one old uh, black pastor said, I believe it from kibber to kibber. I do. I believe every single word that's in here, it's still good for the day. Nothing has changed. 
Not a thing has changed from the days of the early church except we're too chicken to do what they did. That's what the problem is. But it's all there. And there's all the denomination you need is what's in there because you're going to find that they all teach their version of it. But here's the true version right here. Look at it. Read it. And, um, and start following it. And, and, and acquire a hunger for God and for the things of God, and you'll be surprised at what he will do. Let's stand. I'm going to, as I always give the first part of the invitation, if you have never received Christ as your Savior, you should be the first one down here to talk to one of these folks because nothing else matters but that to start with. Nothing else matters. But perhaps you have had that attitude in your heart about it's my uh, my four and no more or whatever that 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 can't wash the gospel is for everybody no matter who they are no matter what they've done no matter where they've been no matter what they have believed prior it's for everybody and maybe you just need to say lord open my heart that i will be open to witnessing to everyone maybe there's an, another situation in your life that needs prayer during this invitation, we invite you to please come and let someone pray with you this morning. Brother Nicky's here waiting if you have a need.
exalt thee. We exalt thee. We exalt thee. We exalt thee. Oh Lord. We exalt thee. We quickly uh, this Wednesday night is going to be something very different from what we've done in a long time we're going to have our meal at starting around 5 45 6 o'clock but then at 6 30 we're going to have a full concert by Nikki Blanton and that's going to be the evening service bring your kids they won't get fidgety listening to me droning on and on and uh, everybody will enjoy the music and you know it's going to be good and there may be a few other folks that'll be singing with him or whatever too, but come on this Wednesday night and it starts, the music will start about 6.30 and to whenever. And like I said, Nikki's kind enough to come and do a full concert for us. Absolutely. Okay. Steve Wilson, now I'll pray for Steve. Leela. Yes, sir. Daylight savings time. Oh, next begins week? Begins Sunday morning. Okay. Week Spring from today. forward an hour. Okay. Update your clock and get to church on time.
it always works out for you, and it will this time, too. It will. All right. Well, not to disturb any further, y'all are dismissed. God bless you. We hope to see you Wednesday night.